Welcome to Africa 360. We are the show that goes across the continent to bring you an authentic view of Africa. I'm Chris Marileng. Do join me right here on Africa 360. In this week's show, we're imagining the future of South Africa. Will the country become an international powerhouse or the perennial underachiever? 20 years after democracy, has the dream for a better South Africa become nothing more than a tagline? Or is it now the time to build and grow? This week on Africa 360, we unpack South Africa's present and plot South Africa's future path. Do stay with us. Plotting a country's future shouldn't be left to chance. It should be more like a game of chess. The pieces in the game would be the policies that move a country to victory. Well, 20 years after democracy, South Africa is on the precipice. Where to next for uh, the country known as the Rainbow Nation? The Institute for Security Studies surveyed uh, South Africa's economy, social and political present and projected how it would all play out over the next 20 years. The result is the African Futures Project. Take a look. Ahead of the 2014 elections, the African Futures Project has modeled three alternative scenarios for South Africa to 2030. We use the International Futures Forecasting System to simulate each scenario. Bufana Bufana simulates South Africa's current political economic path to 2030. This is the story of the perennial underachiever. South Africa makes steady progress, but never quite breaks free from its current cycle of unemployment, inequality and unrest. By comparative middle income standards, South Africa does relatively well. We grow at an average of 3.8% per annum. But the structural limitations to faster and more inclusive growth remain the same. Corruption continues and government only pays lip service to the National Development Plan. Under this business-as-normal forecast, the South African economy grows faster than Europe and North America, but much slower than the rest of Africa. A Nation Divided is a pathway where the ANC opts for populist policies after the elections to retain support. It appropriates and redistributes land, nationalizes mines, and browbeats the country's Chapter 9 institutions. The sum effect is to entrench poverty through policies that serve elite interests with a debilitating impact on government effectiveness. By 2017, South Africa's international credit rating is at junk status. Business confidence plummets and investors withdraw. South Africa still grows, but at an average of only 2.6% out to 2030. Mandela magic is the story of a country with a clear development vision. This is possible either with a reinvigorated and strong ANC that governs the country beyond the 2024 elections or through the rise of genuine multi-party democracy with the ANC losing its majority. Both assume a hard-nosed implementation of a clear development plan and a commitment by all sectors to a social compact. South Africa grows at an average rate of 5.1% to 2030. As growth accelerates under Mandela magic, employment increases and inequalities come down. The difference in outcomes between these three scenarios is large. By 2030, the South African economy can be 23% larger in Mandela magic than compared to our current trajectory of Bafana Bafana. Among many competing priorities, four strategic interventions are key to set South Africa on the Mandela magic pathway. The first is to implement the recommendations of the Slubbit Commission of Inquiry to reclaim political accountability. The second is a leadership that exemplifies the highest standards of values and ethics. The third is an unrelenting commitment to quality in education. Inclusive economic growth is the fourth priority. To create Mandela magic, South Africans need to create a social compact in support of the National Development Plan across all sectors of our society, irrespective of the results of the 2014 elections. 
Well, to help us understand just how these scenarios came to be, I'm now joined by uh, Dr. Yaki Siliers from the Institute for Security Studies. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Now, it comes at a very interesting time for South Africa. It's at a time when South Africa is looking uh, towards commemorating or celebrating, depending on how you want to look at it, 20 years since the transition towards democracy. Was this one of the factors that uh, led you to uh, go into this scenario planning? Very definitely. Um, I think it's time for South Africans, also with the, with the death of Madiba, it wasn't a time for reflection. Mm. And I think South Africans uh, looked in the, in the mirror and they weren't completely comfortable with what they saw. Um, so th there are a lot of confluences that, uh, that come together in this. And, and, and the fact is that um, change is coming to South Africa. Uh, many of the analysts that we speak to would say that the 2014 elections is the start of a really uh, the, uh, a new process in South Africa's political future. Mm. And after 20 years, uh, it's also a time where South Africans need to take ownership of their future. We can no longer blame everybody else for our challenges. Yeah. Yes, we have a, a massive legacy that we have to deal with, but we need to take charge of our future and shape that. And the choices we make in the 2014 elections are going to shape no, our you, future. You, you talk of a narrative. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that narrative and that story. Is the narrative telling us that we are now at a tipping point or at a crucial crossroads for South Africa. Is this one of the key things that the story of South Africa is beginning to tell us right now, based on your study? It tells us that um, the future as uh, we see it unfolding, the base case or the Bafana Bafana scenario, mm -hmm. uh, is not that bad a story, but it's not that good a story either. Yeah. We are ambling along, we are not making the most of the potential of this country. Now, South Africa is a middle-income country. Our average growth rate of middle-income countries throughout the world is about 3.4% going forward. Mm -hmm. South Africa, we estimate under Bafana Bafana, will grow at about 3.8%. So even our ambling along is not doing that badly. Yeah. But look at our unemployment challenges. Look at inequality. We will not be able to deal with that if we do not make fundamental decisions and get our act together. And our interpretation of getting our act together is taking the National Development Plan 2030. It is a document that is not perfect, but it provides a roadmap and a vision. Mm -hmm. And implementing that and holding ourselves and uh, to those commitments. And as we indicate in, in Mandela Magic, there, there are different pathways. It doesn't mean that uh, the ANC loses power or that the DA takes power. Mm. Uh, our, our vision is that there are the two pathways to uh, Mandela Magic it can both be uh, with uh, an ANC, a reinvigorated yeah. ANC that takes charge of its future, mm. or through the rise of mo true multi-party democracy. Will the Rainbow Nation become a nation divided or will the legacy of Mandela magic be our destiny here in South Africa? Do stay with us as we find out. South Africa seems to be the only, almost the only country mm -hmm. in Africa not growing enough. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Africa 360. We're looking into the political and economic crystal ball this week, assessing South Africa today and asking what does South Africa's future look like? Well, joining us uh, to help us unpack uh, these possible futures is uh, Dr. Kofi Kwaku. He's a senior, or he, rather, he's a scenario planner from the University of uh, the Witwatersrand and political analyst uh, Busi Kaba from uh, the University of the Northwest. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we went to break, I was uh, talking to Yaki about the three scenarios that are presented to us in the work that he and the ISS have done looking or modeling South Africa's uh, future. What's your immediate reaction to uh, the scenarios that were painted by uh, Dr. Silius? I tend to disagree slightly because I don't know where this document actually draws from. If it draws from the National Development Plan, it does not speak to the crises that we are faced with, being uh, inequality, um, poverty and unemployment. But here's the issue, Busi, isn't it? Effectively time for the government to implement the NDP and to stick with the policies and the plans that have been painted. 
Mm. It's the controversial discussion of Alex versus Senton. Mm. You know, where are we headed to? What have we done so far? Enough discussions, mm. enough uh, contradictions from the trade unions uh, to ANC. And, and, and basically it's time for action. And, and uh, yes, Kofi Kwaku, I also get the sense that uh, this frustration that uh, Busi is expressing here is, is really shared by a large mass of, the South Africa, of South Africa's population. Really, we have been seeing a large number of so-called service delivery protests, basically people calling for uh, the implementation of the promises that have been made by the government, by the ANC-led government. What's your view on all of this? There is a vision fatigue right across Africa and back to South Africa. People are just tired. But what I really like, I think, about this, this report and this set of scenarios is a powerful reminder again mm -hmm. that, look, it's not just about the vision. You have three powerful scenarios. You have potentially the, the high road, the low road, and the middle of the road. Yeah. And you have to be able to figure out what is your preferred future. Mm. But, but, but here's the thing, uh, Kofi, the, the, the reality of the situation, mm. and here we're talking of the, the high road scenario, the Mandela magic scenario, mm. is that the actual current status quo, considering where we came from, one could very well argue that we're already in Mandela magic. Isn't this a perspective? We're not quite yet there because it's a default setting to, uh, to think that when we look into the past, what we were before and what we are today is sufficient enough to really calm us down and say, well, we've done well. Let's start and think, think about what we've achieved in 20 years. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. The realities are enormous when you look at them. And what makes it really important is that if nothing is done very quickly towards that Mandela magic... Can I, in terms but, of but before you come in, um, uh, Dr. Silias, let's just take a look at this pie chart to basically look at how we'll look like in 2030 under the Mandela magic uh, scenario. Basically, as you can see, uh, the key... Uh, services sector continues to expand, manufacturing, not so much, but still, when we look at some of the, the, the baselines, uh, we, we're basically seeing a positive upward trend in all of these uh, statistics. Now, Yaki, I, I cut in there. One of the key things that you're beginning to raise is that what you're basically arguing is that there's almost a point of saturation in terms of that growth level. Yeah. Uh, but what you're saying is that we can still experience increase jobs, yeah, notwithstanding. Yeah. It's the nature of the growth that is critical. Our major challenge in South Africa is growth and inequality. Yeah. And we need to deal with that inequality. But to deal with the inequality, you have to grow. Now, South Africa is an upper middle income country in yeah. Africa. Yeah. And uh, average growth rates of middle income countries, 3.4%. For mm -hmm. us to grow at 5.1% or 5.4%, very difficult. Yeah. That is much, much slower than the rest of Africa. Mm. SADC grows at about rates of about 8% in our forecast without South Africa. Base, exactly. surely, unlike South Africa, which Correct. has a diversified economy. For us to grow that mm -hmm. fast is much more difficult than it is for Mozambique. Mozambique yeah. can grow at, 10, at yeah. uh, double digit figures. The, 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 the most fundamental thing that emerged from me from this scenario planning, maybe it's because I look at South Africa really as an, an, an integral part of the growth of the African continent, yes. is that in actual fact, yes. if we look at South Africa being able to benefit from these high growth levels in the rest of Africa mm -hmm. and exploiting its manufacturing base, its financial sector, as a key lever towards its development, it's not only South Africa that needs to have Mandela magic but surely the rest of Africa, Kofi Kaku. Yes, indeed. Yes. In fact, a lot of the rest of Africa is having some sort of Mandela magic. I mean, that growth rate that they've been having for the past 10 years is incredible. South Africa seems to be the only, almost the only country mm -hmm. in Africa not growing enough. Strangely enough, it's got the talent, it's got the infrastructure, it's got the money, it's got the resources. Mm -hmm. What is really keeping so, it enough So what growing? is it? What is it? When you hear Kusatu saying, the trade union saying that you know the national development plan is a DA, DA democratic alliance cut and paste document <laughs> strategy you have yeah. a problem because yeah. most of them were consulted mm. and coming to the point where after two years three years the document mm. is out and you're backtracking this but, is a leadership but the, problem but, but before and, you jump in here there's a fundamental mm. uh, point that you're talking about that uh, here we are talking about social cohesion but one of the scenarios painted and let's just bring up the pie chart right now is a nation divided and go. the nation divided and some of the implications of a nation divided are very concerning what we basically see is the slow decline 
of South Africa. I wanted to say something very clear for we know by practicing and doing scenarios and strategic thinking, no country divided or fragmented yeah. can have a great future. That future is going to be fragmented. So there is no hope. This but, is a but, very but, but, dangerous but at driving the same, force. But at the same time, mm -hmm. see the, the reality of politics, the reality of any dynamic society is that there will be divisions. Yes, it's a reality in politics, as they say, there's no permanent friend and there's no permanent enemy. <laughs> and we've seen also contradictions within the alliance itself. Yes. But to, to my knowledge or my interpretation of this contradiction is that it works somehow towards uh, a favorable advantage because Kosatsu is like that partner which constantly reminds the ANC to say, hey, you're moving towards, uh, you've been capitalist, now yeah. you're, moving, you're moving away from and, this and that, goal. That, and, and, that, that that was, and that was one of the, the key challenges that I had in approaching your, um, you know, your scenarios, Jackie, because it seemed very much like you approaching economic planning from a very neoliberal approach in terms of mainstream economics, get the fundamentals right, uh, lessen government intervention, and make sure that you stick to uh, a certain policy ideologically. Wasn't that, it's well, problematic. In a certain sense, South Africa is a small open economy. It's yeah. highly integrated into the global economy. Mm. Um, and uh, the idea that South Africa can turn its back on uh, uh, its membership, its participation in this global economy, mm. and go its own route. Uh, go its own route. It's uh, it's just simply not on. Mm. We need to manage ourselves. We need to be business friendly. Yeah. However much that may be a swear word in certain instances, <laughs> we, we need to uh, invest in our country, and then only then will foreigners invest. The, these, unfortunately, this is the reality. We are highly integrated. Yeah. We cannot, if we embark on, uh, let's say, the renationalization of SASOL, yeah. uh, the, the result is FDI dries up. Uh -huh. um, and these are, the, these are the realities. We need to take foreign investment considerations, our um, uh, benchmarking globally. We need to take these seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, uh, this is actually a good point for us to end because we need to ask the question, how does South Africa ensure a future uh, that takes the most successful path? Do join us after the break as we consider some of these scenarios that are most likely to be embarked upon by South Africa's policy elite only on Africa 360. Welcome back. This is Africa 360. We are asking how South Africa will look like in the year 2030. Remember, it's not as far off as you may think. And in Africa 360 today, we're planning for the decades ahead. Joining us uh, to help us unpack this possible uh, future is Dr. Kofi Kwaku, a scenario planner from the University of the Witwatersrand and uh, political analyst uh, Wusi Kaba from the University of the Northwest. And of course, uh, Dr. Yaki Siliers from the Institute for Security Studies is still with us. Kofi Kwaku, South Africa is not a unified country. They are forces to the left, they are forces to the right. How do you develop that broad-based consensus to create the social cohesion that this policy advocates. This is where, in scenario planning, you have to have realistic leaders. If you took the case of the Chinese, the Chinese are not debating ideological issues anymore. They are looking at the fact, the issues. They're looking at all these six horsemen we've talked about, mm -hmm. poverty, inequality, um, unemployment, crime, corruption. If we agree, and we have to agree that they're bad for our country, and they're not helping the country grow. We need to tackle them very quickly. So essentially, so I, I, we are we saying that it's, 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 not, it's not an ideological kind of debate that we're having here, it but it's really the need for South Africa to get on with it, you to focus to on the basic things. And active execute. Citizenry. Active, active citizen, citizenry, yeah. which is what the National Development Plan and spends and a whole chapter on. Yeah. It is that South Africans get together and start fixing the country, yeah. fixing your school, the library, the things in your backyard, and we get together as South Africans and work. make, make our you own You can be a work. socialist, a communist, a neoliberal. If the country is not working, you've got to fix it. So here, here's the thing, though. The Auditor General has just released a report which says that there is about 30 billion rand that has gone missing due to either wasteful expenditure or just basically unaccounted for theft, mill administration. It's, it's terrible, isn't it? 30 billion is a lot of money which could have taken us way down that path towards Mandela magic. But unless we resolve those issues, then it doesn't look like we're going on that path, Coffee. Yes. But there's a strong feeling. In fact, citizen movement 
the, it's a, there's a perception that they're not emerging. In fact, they are emerging. They're trying their best. They haven't. The scenario, the Dino King scenarios a couple of years ago have shown, in fact, it was around two essential uh, driving forces, government, the state, mm -hmm. and then the citizen movement. Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, the Ahang, move, Ahang party came out of that, so which is really important. And you can see also, you can get the signs now, that people are so frustrated that citizens are taking but, but lives in their own you, You're raising and the issue of Fahang, and indeed, uh, one of the factors that were looked at by uh, Dr. Siliers is that we could see uh, not just a, a, a buoyant ANC uh, uh, taking us to that Mandela magic, but really sort of a coalition-based uh, form of politics. But opposition politics is looking really weak in South Africa. Yes. Look at the debacle between Ahang and the Democratic Alliance where we saw them uh, this false start to what some people were describing as Dachan. Yes, but <laughs> I, I, would, I would say, just, just to go quickly on finishing on the citizen movement, they're still looking for their teeth. And even this debacle, that most movements are now emerging, and no movement emerges like this and everything will be perfect. They but, are but, funny but themselves. But do you agree with and, this? You wanted and, and to... No, by and large... Uh, we, we say that there are two routes to, uh, to Mandela magic, and one of them, which you're referring to, is the rise of true multi-party democracy. Mm. There is no doubt that in yeah. the longer term, a true competitive political system is our only guarantee uh, for a, a leadership that is accountable, a South Africa that grows. But we also say that there is the chance that the ANC, after the 2014 elections, maybe under a, a new deputy president, reinvigorates itself yes. and looks at where, where, where it has gone to and seizes the leadership to provide that kind of moral leadership. Yes. So there are two routes there to, two, there, to there, Mandela there two Magic. to Mandela Magic. But here is another question, Busi. It Good. appears that from the scenarios that uh, Dr. Celia presents to us that in actual fact, Yaki sees parties like the EFF as the problem because they are calling for nationalization of the mines. Yeah. They are also calling for land redistribution. Yeah. The kind of populism that you say could lead us onto a path well, actually, to disaster. We, actually, the scenario is that the ANC reacts to uh, parties like the EFF mm -hmm. and implements itself populist parties. There's no chance that the EFF is going to become government in the next three, four elections. Okay. No chance at all. But but still, they, they, they are advocating for very strong policies that... That, that, uh, that is a good feature of multi-party democracy. Yeah. Um, so I think particularly if you see weakening of Kusatu, yeah. it's very important for our structural politics that we have strong parties to the left of the ANC that can drive those, that can vo give a voice to that. Because the reality is that the ANC is no longer longer seen as speaking to its grass, grassroots, as you were pointing. It's lost contact. I, I think to me, multi-party democracy need to not just talk in parliament, but they need to be very practical about the issues of the countries. And that there are so many issues right now that needs attending, that you can't just be talking about 15 parties, even the, the default party I call the ANC, even if the ANC wins again, the key thing that's remains, it's to deal with the issues. The mm. issues are the parties. Yeah. That's the point. And that's one of the reasons you see small fringe parties like the EFF naming themselves yeah. the Economic Freedom Party, because economic issues are the issues, and people want to deal with that. So here's the thing, before we wrap up, I'll, I'm going to ask you to you know, rub that uh, crystal ball of yours, Kofi Kwaku and Busi, mm. and tell us which are the most likely scenarios of the three. Is it going to be Mandela Magic, a nation divided, or, you know, Bafana, Bafana, the middle road, Busi. Oh, Chris, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, 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 as much as I see the Mandela magic as being the most ideal situation we would <laughs> want to find ourselves in 2030, I'm also a realist. Mm -hmm. We're not speaking to real issues. We're not um, implementing, and we are not, also with implementation must come the constant evaluation and monitoring of this plan. Where are we? Uh, what are our successes? What are we learning so far? So I'm, I'm a bit skeptical, but I, I do predict that South Africa will do well and research that. And also we need to recognize or actu actually acknowledge the mistakes of the past from other past policies and all the other small policies mm -hmm. I've heard um, uh, national growth path, how do they fit in into the NGP? So, so make essentially, it a, a very non committal <laughs> Wusi Kaba there. Kofi Kwaku, are you going to nail your colors? I'm going to nail it. Yeah. We are now at a Bafana Bafana scenario. It's not bolding, bo uh, bolding well. Mm -hmm. If there are no bold leadership to take things by the head, we're still going to be dragged not only into the divided scenario, we're going to go what we call a low road. And that mirror of the Mandela magic is still going to be very far as a mirage so far.
a mirage in the horizon. All that's left for us to do is to thank our guests for joining us here on Africa 360 and sharing uh, these key insights as we uh, basically look at where we see South Africa going to, particularly as we look far over that horizon. It's not that far, 2013. Tell us what you think and where you think South Africa will be going. Send your predictions via our Facebook page or tweet us at uh, Africa360 underscore ENCA. You can also always send us an email at Africa360 at ENCA.com. So until next time, we look forward to bringing you Africa like you've never seen it before. Take care.